welcome to Cross TV. I'm so excited about sharing another week with you. I hope you're just as excited about what God is about to do. You know, the Lord is teaching us through our own circumstances how to walk out things and how to discern the spirits now that are out there that maybe we've not encountered in fully before. And he's teaching us how to know the difference between someone who walks what they talk, someone who's maybe intermingled some things with Christianity and want to sell you those things as if they were pure and holy and righteous. And, and what it boils down to is this. Surrender your character People who have nothing to hide, hide nothing. And so we're going to talk about that a little bit today. And I'm going to read you some notes. And I'm going to stop and interject along the way. And I want you to ponder what you think the Lord is telling us today about what's loosed upon planet Earth. Because, you know, it's very real, beloved, that Many are going to come in the name of the Lord, and he's going to say, depart from me, I know you not. And I don't know about you, but that would be the end of who I am if I thought I had strived my whole life to be or do something for the Lord Jesus. And all of a sudden he said, depart from me. But he doesn't do that without knowing the heart of those that he's dealing with. He does it because he's wooed and he's wooed and he's wooed. And he says, I want you to stop doing what you're doing. I want you to be holy. I need you to be holy for you to exist during this end time harvest. You have to be aware of your surroundings, who labors among you, what I'm telling you to do. You have to be able to hear my voice, and you have to understand my word. But most of all, you have to know your Father. And if you think it's going to be easy for the Lord to say, depart from me, I know you not, it breaks his heart. But what he wants is for every human being upon planet earth, every Christian that has invited him in to be successful in their walk where the enemy doesn't have a crack in our armor and that he can't penetrate anything that we're doing because every thought is taken into captivity and we bring it into the throne of grace asking him and Holy Spirit and Father God to show us what we're really made of and what we're about to walk through. It's not business as usual. It's a time to gear up and get ready for what Ye Yeshua HaMashiach is about to do upon planet Earth. Get ready, beloved, for signs and wonders and miracles are loose. Get ready. His word is going forth without spot or blemish. Get ready, because what you've been created for, it is now your time to shine. Rise up, O oh sleeper, for the generals have been positioned at the forefront, and there's a changing of the guards taking place. But let's look at some aspects of what the enemy is trying to do to us now. I'm referring to Balaam. That's in Numbers 22, 24. Who was Balaam? He was a wicked prophet in the Bible. In the Bible. Although he was a wicked prophet, he was not a false prophet. Balaam did hear from God. And God did give him some true prophecies to speak. However... Balaam's heart was not right with God, and eventually he showed his true colors by betraying Israel and leading them astray. We find in the story about Balaam and King Moab a man called Balak. King Balak wanted to weaken the children of Israel who were on their way and had moved into Balak's territory. 
and asked him, he asked Balaam to curse Israel in exchange for a great reward. Balaam was apparently willing to do this, but he needed God's permission. Balaam, of course, had no power in itself to curse Israel, but if God was willing to curse Israel, Balaam would be rewarded through Balak. God told Balaam, you must not curse these people. They are blessed. King Balak then, then sent other officials more numerous and more distinguished than the first, promising a handsome reward. This time God said, you go with them, but do only what I tell you to do. The next morning, Balaam saddled up his donkey and left for Moab. God sent an angel to oppose Balaam on the way. The donkey Balaam was riding could see the angel, but Balaam could not. And when the donkey three times moved to avoid the angel... Balaam was very angry and beat the animal. And then the Lord opened up the donkey's mouth. The donkey then rebuked the prophet for beating him. And then the Lord opened Balaam's eyes. And he saw the angel of the Lord standing in the road with a sword. The angel told Balaam that certainly he would have killed him had the donkey not spared his life. Ironically, a dumb, be dumb beast had more wisdom than God's prophet. The angel then repeated to Balaam the instruction that was only to speak what God had said concerning the Israelites. And that was a blessing. However, later, Balaam figured out a way to get his reward from Balak. Balaam advised the Moabites on how to entice the people of Israel with prostitutes and idolatry. He could not curse Israel directly, so he came up with a plan for Israel to be cursed, to bring curse upon themselves. Balak followed Balaam's advice, and Israel fell into sin, worshiping Baal of Peor and committing fornication with the Midianite women, for this God plagued them, and 24,000 men died. May I tell you, beloved, there are many in our company that truly were called to be prophets, and truly I believe their gifts were pure and righteous in the beginning. And I believe somehow, like Luke says about Balaam, he says he, he was out for personal gain. But others have said his heart, that his heart was wicked and that he strategically planned ways to get his reward, his material blessing. He wanted that money. He wanted that blessing of Balak, even though God had told him not to curse the Israelites. But he found a way through the Midianite women to come in and bring idolatry and unclean spirits in through sexual immorality. And I believe that not one or two, not 10, not 20, not a congregation of 1,000, but 24,000 lives were taken. And do you know whose blood and head that's going to fall upon? Balaam's. For there will be a day that the Lord will hold him responsible for every device, every mischievous move, every deceptive act that has done, is done to come against the purity and holiness of what God has called into being. Beloved, this is not the time to mix any kind of witchcraft or idolatry or self-will or that spirit of mammon that wants what the world has and wants exposure, wants money, wants prosperity. And they're, they're trying to get it 
in a way, maybe even in the workplace, that is not the way to go about doing it. And God's getting ready to reveal and uncover. And every one of those things will be exposed. There's a spirit of reversal that has been loosed. And this spirit's like a boomerang. All that you have declared and decreed and done in secret is going to turn around and come and be exposed. It's not to bring people down. It's that they would surrender and repent. And repent doesn't mean I apologize and no, tomorrow I'm going to go out and do the same thing with the same mindset and the same heart. It means repent means to turn away from your sin. Turn away from your sin, beloved, for those things that you're called into doing that, that God has called you to do. Do it with clean cans above reproach that he would look at you and say, well done, my good and faithful servant. Don't you know how proud I am of you and how much I love you? For he's the father of love and no unclean thing will be left not exposed. The Lord will leave you to do what you want to do because he's given you freedom of choice. But if this is not the time to venture off away from his covering and protection. It is a time to run to the very feet of Jesus and repent and ask for mercy and grace that he could change your heart and cause you to be who he really created you to be, that he would raise you up with his steadfast love and loose you with his right hand of anointing that has appointed you to the nations, that through you he can declare the coming of the king. Isn't your heart's desire to long after the Messiah, to see him face to face, to look into his eyes and know that all that he has for you is good and pleasing and great and wonderful, and that your heart would overflow with such loving kindness, and you would be so grateful and appreciative of who your king is and who you serve. Oh, beloved, every prophecy you've ever received is contention upon what you do with it. And to make it come to fruition, you have to stand upon integrity and honesty and holiness. And your character has to be incredible before the Lord. And the only one that can do that is King Jesus. But as we surrender and as we repent and we're not playing games at the foot of the cross anymore, the Lord raises us up when we've humbled ourselves and we walk in meekness and don't interpret that for weakness. And he raises you up to do what he's called you to do. Beloved, it's time where the Balaams are going to be revealed. It's time that the Lord raises up his army and his generals, his warriors, his handmaidens, those that he's called to meet him on the mountain of inheritance. Oh, beloved, don't you know that we don't need material things in heaven. We don't need money in heaven. We don't need breakthrough in heaven. We don't need healing in heaven. We don't need to even be more than we are right now in heaven because when we get there, it's all automatic. The Lord has done a mighty work. We're not even the same. We're transformed into his image. But now we do need those things. And the Lord's getting ready to open the floodgates of heaven and pour forth blessing upon planet earth that they cannot contain. But not every vessel will be a vessel of honor and be able to hold the glory that the Lord is pouring out. The very thing that's meant to bless will crush some because the purity and holiness and righteousness and the stability of a relationship with the living God that says, no, don't turn there. No, don't go there. No, don't look at that. No, don't take that. No, don't do that. We listen and we obey. So we've learned how to take instruction, how to hear his voice, how to walk in his calling. Is that your heart's desire today? Do you want to be pure and holy and, and, and walk in righteousness? Oh, the minute you receive Jesus, I told you last week, you are the righteousness of Christ. Nothing can change that. 
But from day to day, we move from glory to glory in holiness. We become more like the king that we worship. We become more like the one that sees with eyes of flames of fire, the judge that comes in and judges the very body of Christ in their coming and going. Oh, beloved, I believe Balaam started out as a prophet who loved the Lord with his whole heart. And he got caught up in the things of the world. He got caught up in the monetary things. He got caught up in the fame and fortune. He got caught up in, in being called the prophet. And he went astray when King Balak tempted him. And, and he became like the world. And he began to use devices of the world. And he actually robbed himself of his inheritance. Don't be one that falls under those things that are not true, where the foundation is not trustworthy or transparent. For the Lord Jesus today wants to tell you about the things to come and encourage your heart about what he's about to do on planet Earth and how no stone will go not unturned, how no darkness will not be revealed. There'll be no place to hide from the Spirit of God for that reversal has come upon planet Earth. Oh, as the 24,000 were taken because they didn't yield to what the Lord had told them, they succumbed to the, the temptation. The Midianite women who, who came with impurity and sexual sin, they actually... Uh, came, upon, uh, came upon the Israelites and had them serving other gods and had them intermingling with things they never should have done. Oh, beloved, today the Lord is calling you into that place of a divine calling, of a place no one else can promote you to, a place that only Jesus has called you to before the foundation of times that he wrote within your books where he has opened the pages of those things that only you can pull down from the Spirit. Only you can bring them into fruition. For this is the time that Jesus is saying, will you walk what you talk? Will you be what I've called you to be because I have a mighty work for you to do? I don't know where you're at right now. I don't know what nation you're in. I don't know what situation you're in, but I do know this. There's a trusted, loving Savior, Jesus Christ of Nazareth, that wants you to allow him to come into your heart and life and change who you are. Change the way that you think. Give you a new beginning. He wants you to know and understand there's no sin that's too deep and too far from him that he cannot cleanse. This is the time to come into that place of letting him come into your heart. If you're feeling that tugging now, there's a battle for your soul. It may not be what you believe. It not, may not be the way that you've been raised. It may not be what you understand. But truth will bear witness with truth. For the Lord has called you into this place at this time to see this program not by accident. And he has called you into that place of his loving kindness where he says, let me help you. Let me touch you. Let me deliver you. Let me set you free. Let me tell you about my character. Let me show you what I'm about to do on planet Earth. Let me entice you in that way that, that you know that I am such a good, loving father, that everything I have is a good gift. Oh, beloved, I've served my God for 35 years now. I came out of a life of, of drug use and being raised by a witch and... And being beaten every day, I tell you, beloved, the only thing that could change me, the only thing that made my life worthwhile was Jesus Christ of Nazareth. And he's coming back. And he's coming back soon. And he's coming back to receive you. If you will take 
what he offers you today. Today may be the only day that you have to ask Jesus in your heart. No one's, us, no one's promised us tomorrow. May I pray for you now wherever you are. Lord, I, I call upon legions of angels that you've dispatched wherever this word is going forth, that you would loose them with a holy thunder that would waken up even the deepest sleeper. Even those that would run from you now, they stand to attention and about face and listen to your calling with ears that will hear your word. And Lord, we come into this place recognizing that you are the King of kings and the Lord of lords and only you are worthy of all praise. And we come and bow our hearts down before you and declare you as King of all. Oh, Lord Jesus, take our sin, put it in the sea of forgetfulness, never again to remember. Oh, God, we cry out to you. We can't do it alone. We need you to rescue us and save us and help us that we need to believe that you're real. I pray for holy visitations, interaction with angels, God, signs and wonders and miracles. Healings are taking place right now. And the Lord says, my beloved, if you're watching this, what would you ask of me? For I've come to heal, deliver, and set free. And I'm coming back for a people. And I'm coming back for you if you will let me touch your heart today. I am trustworthy, I am mighty, I am good. I am the king of all. And every knee will bow and every tongue will confess that I am the Lord God Almighty. Listen to my word, beloved, for I loose my truth over you today. I loose my word over you today. I loose my love over you today that I may captivate your heart and change your situation. I've called you into this place that you would know who I am because I want to know everything about you. Don't you know that I woo you and I love you? Oh, beloved, I want to really get to know you. And so, Lord, we seal that word and we dispatch your word and your angels and we glorify your holy name and we ask God that you bring change to every situation, every life today. For, Lord, you're good, and you have gifts that you're distributing right now. And I see angels pouring vessels of, of it looks like liquid love over those that are listening, God, and they're going to forever be changed. And we thank you for what you're doing right now. Lord, we bless you. Yeshua HaMashiach, we can't wait to see you face to face. There's no one like you. Lord, I'm so in love with you. And I pray those that are watching today would also fall so deeply in love with you. Thank you once again for letting me share and bring, come, bring into your house this truth that will even change the atmosphere and it will change your situation. And Lord, we ask this all in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Until next week. Bye-bye.